Good day, people. It is a Tuesday, October 4th. Um, I think it's October 4th. Yeah. Yesterday was the third Leap Erickson Day. Yay, for those of us who know, know who he is and celebrate his finding North America. Yes. Leif Berkerson found America 500 years before Christopher Columbus. The area that Leif discovered was now known as Nova Scotia. In truth, Christopher Columbus only discovered the Bahamas. He didn't even discover Florida. <clears throat> Anyhow, that's my rant on that. I actually came on here to show you something I got today, and I was like, yay, and then I looked at it and went, oh my god, it's about as thick as the Bible. And you're wondering what it is. It's not something from the Norse. It's not something from the Celts. It's not from that. It is the lost books of the Bible. And look how thick that sucker is. No, sorry. back can't even tell you. Section 1. Lost Scriptures of the Old Testament. First Book of Adam and Eve. Second Book of Adam and Eve. First Book of Enoch. Second Book of Enoch. Secrets of Enoch. Jubilee, or Jubilees. Joshua. J-A-S-H-E-R. The story of Ahai Khan, Ahaikur, A H I K A R. The second book, or section two, is called The Apocalyptic Writings in the End of Days. Apocalypse, Apocalypse, or Apocalypse. Of Abraham, Apocalypse of Thomas, for Ezra, E Z R A, second Bar, yeah, B A R B A R U C U C H. War Scrolls, Sons of Dark and Sons of Light. Sec Section 3, Lost Scriptures of the New Testament. The Gospel of Philips. Gospel of Mary Magdalene. A yeah, A-P-O-C-R-Y-P. P-H-O-N of John. Gospel Thomas. Gospel of Judas. And Acts chapter 9. I have not even started reading in, into it. I'm sitting there going, oh my, 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 my. And am I like really curious to start reading this? And there's a intro, the introduction to the book, and then section one. Mm hmm. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And Yeah, this is going to be, this, this is not a light read. <laughs> I can say that to you, I mean, right off the bat, this is not a light read. But to see how many books and, and whatnot were removed from the original translation of the Bible... To what we call modern day, the modern day Bible. 
Now, I've heard stories that some of the, like, Enoch. I heard that the book of Enoch, the books of Enoch, um, had been removed. I didn't realize there was a book, let alone two books, on Adam and Eve. Um, the Jubilees could be celebrations or holidays of the Old Testament. You know, the Apocalypse of Adam and the Apocalypse of Thomas. And then War Scrolls. And then Gospels. I mean, Gospels of Philip, Gospels of Mary Magdalene, Gospels of Thomas and Judas. Let's just say that this is going to probably take me, if I were to start reading this now, it would probably take me to the end of the year to finish this. If I were to read it literally book by book, or, or every day, try to read like a portion or a chapter or whatever couple chapters of each. So this is gonna... <laughs> oh boy. I, I'm... Let's just say, part of me is like, wow. I did not know that there was... So, I mean, I didn't know there was this much removed from, from the original uh, text. Um, I can kind of, kind of understand now, just looking at the sheer size of this book, that if this combined with the, the, the Bible that we use today would be huge, it would be thick and heavy. Um, I don't even see how. I can I can't even fathom what it must have been like in the old days when they had these books. You know, before they started uh, dissecting it for the general pop, pop yeah general populace. Um, thing is I am in the middle of reading a book and I'm like I don't really want to stop reading that particular book and then start reading this book because if I don't finish that one book and start reading another book my my information in my mind and whatnot will start to go bonkers because it will be literally too too much information I mean I'm looking at this going, mm -hmm. I can see where the um, expression TMI started, or too much information started, because these are the great reje rejected texts by Joseph B. Lumpkin. I think I finally found a book that um, I can say that I've taken I, I've um, tried to take a bite out of something bigger than I could bite whatever that expression is But I think that I'm looking at this book and I'm not feeling overwhelmed. I'm just kind of like... Hmm. It's like, do I read it? I hope I don't get disappointed. Or do I read it and hopefully um, gain a better understanding of our Christian faith and where it came from. 
or did I read it and I hope there's no, um, what am I thinking of, what word am I thinking of, contradiction, but I'm, <laughs> several pages in the back, I guess, for notes, because they're just blank. By the looks of this, the author did not do any um, flourishing or, or, or making it look pr pretty and exciting. It looks like it's just point blank information that you read and decide what to do with. I was excited to order it. I was excited to find out it was coming. Now, I'm sorry about that. Now that I have it, I'm nervous. The only word I can think of right now is nervous because it's like, oh yeah, I got the book. And now it's like, oh yeah, it sounds like it's gonna. It, it looks a little um, un undaunting because it's so thick, but at the same time, it's like, I've always, always wondered if there was any more information than what I was reading as a kid. I always felt that something seemed to be missing from the Bible as a kid. Like something just didn't add up when I was reading the Bible as a child. Now, at first, when I look back, I was like, oh, that's because I'm a child, and I don't... I was a child back then, and I did not fully understand or grasp all the conce concepts in the Bible. Now that I'm an adult, have had my Christian... my, my issues with, with established churches and, and religions and whatnot, and... <laughs> I realize that maybe there is something out there missing. And I'm kind of hoping that this will clear it up. If I can get the uh, courage to, to read it. Because... Well, let, me, let me just quickly glance at the intro. The study of scripture is a lifelong venture. Many times our search for deeper understanding of the Holy Bible leads to questions beyond the Bible itself. As we encounter references to social conditions, cultural practices, and even other writings mentioned within the scripture, we are called to investigate and expand our knowledge. So just right there alone is like, okay, yeah, I, I believe that, you know, we're supposed to be expanding our knowledge no matter what. Um, expanding, on, expanding our knowledge in order to fully appreciate the context, knowledge base, and cultural significance of what is being taught thus to fulfill to fully understand the Bible we are necessarily drawn to sources outside the Bible these sources add to the historical social and theological understanding of biblical ideas or biblical times excuse me as our view becomes more my car oh what the mar cosmic I'm probably saying that wrong we see the p 
panoramic settings and further understand the full truth within the scripture. To point us to the sources we should be consider, con concerned with, not concerned, yeah, concerned with, we must know which books were popular and important at the time. There are several books mentioned in the Bible which are not included in the Bible. Okay. They are not spiritually canon either because they were not available at the time the canon was originally adopted or at the time they were not considered inspired in case when inspiration was questioned. One could uh, argue that any book quoted or mentioned by a prophet or an apostle, apostle excuse me, should be considered as spiritually canon. Unfortunately, this position would prove too simplistic. Okay. Books and writings can fall under various categories such as civil records and laws, historical documents, or spiritual writings. A city or state census is not inspired, but it could add insight into certain areas of life. Spiritual, writing, spiritual writings, which are directly quoted in the Bible, serve as insight into beliefs of the writer or what was considered acceptable by society at the time. As with any new discovery, investigation, or belief, the new is in interpreted based upon the structure of what came before. This was the way in the first century Christian church as beliefs were based upon the old Jewish understanding. Although one should realize pagan beliefs were also added to the church as non-Jewish populations were converted, bringing with them the foundations of their beliefs on which they interpreted Christianity. In the case of Jude, James, Paul, and, other, and others, the Jewish past was giving way to the Christianity, Christian present, but their understanding and doctrine were still being influenced by what they had learned and experienced previously. It becomes obvious that to understand the Bible, one should endeavor to investigate the books and doctrines that most influenced the writings of the Bible. Some of the doctrines involved to become today's faith, some diverged and complete competed as with orthodox doctrine, others simple fade away others simply fade away. Hmm interesting already I already thought provoking or invoking or have one put it but it's definitely something to consider the various influences of the time the Dead Sea Scrolls found in the cave of Cormoran I hope I spelled that right no, Q, Q, 
cumin, cumarin, something of that nature, um, are of great interest in the venture of clarifying the history and documentation in existence between biblical times and the fixed canon. The scrolls were penned in the second century BC and were in use at least until the destruction of the second temple in 70 AD. Similar scrolls to these found in the 11th cave were also found at the Masada, Masada stronghold which fell in 73 AD. Fragments of every book of the Old Testament except Esther were found in the caves, but so were many other books. Mm -hmm. Some of these books are considered to have been of equal importance and influence to the people of Corman Q U M R A N and to the writers and scholars of the time. Some of those studying the scrolls found were the written, the writers of the New Testament. Knowing this, one might ask which of the dozens of non-canonical books most influenced the writers of the Old Testament. It is possible the it is possible to ascertain the existence of certain influences within the Bible context by using a the Bible itself. The Bible can direct us to other works in three ways. The work can be mentioned by name as is the book of Esther. The work can be quoted within the Bible text as is the case with the book of Enoch. The existence of the work can be alluded to as is the case of the missing letter from the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians. In the case of these books named in the Bible, one can set a little, one can set a list as the titles are named. The list is lengthy, lengthier than one might at first expect. Most of these works have not been found. Some have been unearthed, but the authority in question, by uh, but the authorities in question, others have found, and wait a minute, others have been found and the link between scripture and scroll is genuinely accepted. Following as a list of books mentioned in the Holy Bible. The book of Jasper. These two references to the old to the book in the Old Testament. First reference is Second Samuel one eighteen. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasper, so the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nations avenge themselves of their enemies. Ooh. Joshua ten thirteen. It 
Oh, Joshua 10.13, is it not written in the book of Jasper and the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and did not hasten to go down down for about a whole day. About a whole day, the sun stayed at high noon. There are several books which have come to us entitled the Book of Jasper. One is in authentic treat. Yeah. Okay. Test no Christ whatever. From the Middle e is from the Middle Age. It began with a section on the mystery of the creation of the world. It is clearly unrelated to the Bible book of Jas Jasper. Not Jasper. Jashir? J-A-S-H-E-R. Hmm, okay. Another was published in 1829, supposedly translated by Falcus Al. Dennis Kunis. Uh, it opens with chapter 1, verse 1, reading, While it was the beginning darkness overpeating the face of nature, it is now considered a fake. Okay, so that one book, written back in 19, uh, 18, 19, 1829 was fake. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the third and most important is the Midrash, Midrash first translation into English in 1840. It opens with chapter 1, verse 1, reading, And God said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness and God created man in his own image. A comparison of Joshua 10.13 with Jashir okay here's a bunch of numbers makes it clear that the book of Jashir at least follows cl close enough with the Bible to be the book of Jashir mentioned in the Bible. Other books mentioned in the Bible are the book of wars, the book of wars of the Lord, therefore it is said in the book of of the wars of the Lord number numbers uh, um, 21 14 and they continue to give lists of references where they mention these books that are missing throughout the Bible um, the existence of a book can be referred as well this is clearly seen with several missing epi epistles. Okay. Paul's letter to the church at Laodicea, when this letter is read among you, have it also read in the church of the yeah and you for your past read my letter that is coming from 
Right. So it talks about different areas in the Bible where they mention some of these books that are missing. Um, but the first book, Adam and Eve, the conflict with Satan. Uh, just goes to read all the different chapters from that book, I guess. Several different chapters. Oh, ladder chapters. Of course, they have it all numbered by Roman, Roman, uh, yeah, Roman letters. But, anyhow, I, I, I could go on and on through that book because I'm curious to see what it says. But to find out that there's more than one bo whole book missing, the Book of Enoch, um, it's kind of astonishing. But... I know there will be a few of you that if I decide to read it out loud, like I just did for the intro, um, might have problems because of my speech problems and my reading problems. But you also might have problems with the addition of this information to our modern day Bible. Because um, there's a lot of people like, oh, there's nothing more than this. Um, obviously there is. Because if there wasn't meant to be more than what we know now, where would be we be? You know, and I'm not talking about just about the Bible. I'm talking about in general. If the Bible is the be all end all, then why are there so many other religions? Why is it that there's people out there like this author? who most likely had people that he had contact with help him with finding this information, was able to create this book, the context within this book. Um, but that's for each individual person to decide and to decide for themselves because nobody else can make that decision for them or for me or for you, or anything like that. It is up to the individual reader, or soul searcher, or what are you going to call it, to read, and discover, and decide whether it's true or not. But anyhow, I'm not going to make this any longer, because I just wanted to talk about the book real quick. So... I hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, I'm sorry. I can't please everybody all the time. Um, in fact, if you think about it, you're only supposed to be pleasing yourself. You're, you can only make yourself unhappy. Nobody can make you happy. You have to do it on your own. Nobody can tell you what to do. That's your choice. That is your God-given right. There's a lot of things out there that people take granted of and try to take, you know, advantage of people because they're lost or they're just, you know, somebody thinks they're gullible. You know, that's that's on you. That I I can't I can't tell you what to think. I can't tell you what to do. I can't make you do what I want you to do. That's you know. It's not my job, it's not my right, that's nobody's right. It's only one person's right and he's upstairs, you know, waiting for us to make up our minds and then he'll go 
Yeah, there you go. You did it right, finally. Um, yeah, he does give somewhat of a guide, guiding hand, but it is in our interest to do it ourselves. But, you know, God works in mysterious ways. You know, there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But, from what little I do know, this book is, I, it was recommended by several different people I know. Um, some of them are pastors or educators of, of the Christian faith. Um, I'm pretty sure if I was having the situations I'm having now and I went to talk to one of my old OCC professors, I'm pretty sure that they would like expand your knowledge, read more books from find more information on the areas that you're looking for information. You know, Bible's got a whole lot of different things that it has information on, but it's up to us, the individual, to decide how it's going to work or if it can work. So, anywho, you know, like I said, if you uh, enjoyed this uh, video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put them in the question comment box. And if you are new to my channel and you're interested in my take on religion, um, Christianity, uh, Norse paganism, different religions that I've studied, and usually if I if I mention them here, it's either I have a base knowledge on what they are and how the practices are, or or I practice them, practiced them in one shape or form in my youth, like Druidism, shamanism, um, paganism, um, Christianity. I did some study on a lot of different Christ, a lot of different Christian groups that are labeled differently than mainstream Christians, like Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, uh, Catholic. All these things, all the all these groups, whatever you call it, I have studied about them, and. I know a lot of people sit there and go tell me to stop, you know, bashing on the on the Catholics or any, or anything like that. Well, I'm not bashing. I'm educating. I'm putting forth my information on my knowledge. Does not mean I have anything against, you know, the various different religions. And I know most of the ba most of the so-called bashing I do is on Catholics because, well. If you know the history of the Catholic Church and you know the true history, not just what the Catholic Church wants to shove down your throat, you would realize that out of all the different religions that have blood on their hands, and every religion has blood on their hands, Catholics tend to have more than they, their fair share. Let's just say that much. I mean, it's the Catholics that started the Crusades. Um, it was basically the Catholics did the, the Spanish Inquisition. Um, now I don't remember if Charlemagne was Catholic or what his de his denomination was, but it was Charlemagne who basically you know forced. He was one of the many hands that forced the various European pagan groups. The ultimatum of convert or die. Of course, most pagans are like, <laughs> you think we're afraid to die? No. Um, but, you know, every, every, I don't care. Every religious group has had some form of blood on their hands because of the various different things that they had to do or they felt it was necessary for them to do to make things the way they thought. The Bible wanted it to be. No. No. But anyhow. 
it's your choice to, to join. You don't have to. Um, I'm a bit of a nutcase anyhow. And, you know, if if I were to sit down and, and talk about my my life story, basically. Yeah, there's a lot of... Sorry, there's a lot of good you know, wholesome things in my, in, in my childhood and whatnot, but there are just things that were, went screwy, went aside or went awry because of one thing or another, but anyhow, I will sign off here. So you guys have a good day. Enjoy. Bye.